As Christians, taking care of our spiritual body through our constant communion with the Spirit of God is very important. But let us not forget the shell that houses our spirit, which is our physical body. Our temple that God has uh, entrusted us should also be administered, should be ministered by taking a balanced lifestyle. An important lifestyle, mga kapatid, that most of, often than not are less prioritized and taken for granted by many, including Christians like us. Kadalasan kasi, nakikita lamang ang kahalagahan ng balanced lifestyle kapag ang buhay ay naharap na sa mga komplikasyon, mga, mga issues dala ng maling pamumuhay. Be reminded, mga kapatid, that having a balanced lifestyle enables us to function well and enjoy our lives to the fullest while we minister for God's glory. We should always truthfully assess our life's balance sheet, ensuring that the equation of our daily life is productive, healthy, and blissful end result. We are to assign values to the many variables in our life while acknowledging the significance of God, and His constant grace that should be inclusive in our life's analogy. God has created us whole. Kahit pasabihin, puto lang isang paa natin, puto lang isang kamay, may kulang sa parte ng ating katawan, still, we were created by God whole and complete and continuously operates in our lives without interfering with our freedom to decide. Maayos tayong nilalang ng Diyos at patuloy na gumaganap siya sa ating mga buhay upang mapanatili ang ating kaayusan ng hindi nanghihimasok sa ating mga kalayaang pumili ng kung anong iibigin natin. At sa patuloy na pagkilos ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay, tungkuli naman nating magpa siya ng tama. Pumili ng maayos upang ang hangarin niyang maganda uh, na maganap sa ating mga buhay ay matupad. At sa punting ito ay napakahalaga ang paghahari ni Jesus sa ating kalooban ng buo. Yung buong buo, 100%, hindi 50% lang, hindi two-thirds lang, kundi buo. Upang magkaroon tayo ng kakayahang magpasya ng tama. At mapanatiling nakaayon ang ating mga buhay sa tamang timbangan. Calibrated by the loving Father, by our Almighty God. Kung magkagayon mga kapatid, ang magandang layunin ng Diyos na magkaroon tayo ng maayos na pamumuhay sa pansamantala nating pamamalagi dito sa lupa ay matutupad hanggang sa piti natin ang panahon ng ating pagtawid sa kabilang buhay sa kaharian ng Diyos. The question now is, how can we embody a balanced lifestyle while on earth? How to honor God through our balanced life? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this very special day. Thank you, Lord God, for the life that we have. Salamat, Panginoon, at kami ay patuloy mong iniingatan, patuloy mo kaming pinaaalalahanan, patuloy mo kaming tinuturuan, patuloy mo kaming sinasamahan. Sa mga sumandaling ito, Lord, inihiling po namin na buksan mo ang iyong kalangitan at pababain ang iyong, mga, ang iyong banal na spirito at limliman kaming lahat. Infill us with your wisdom, O God. Infill us with your power and your strength, Lord God. Embrace us with your peace, with your love and your protection. Maging iyong anak, Panginoon, ay hinihiling kong itago mo sa iyong likuran. Gamitin mo lamang bilang iyong bibig upang maihayag ang iyong katotohanan na walang labis at walang kulang. Dakilang Diyos aming Ama, hinihiling po namin sa inyo na kami samahan. Palibutan ng iyong mga anghel upang ang kaaway hindi makakilo sa aming kalagitnaan. Bagkos Panginoon kong Diyos, ang kalayaan mo ang aming maranasan. Lord, we thank you, we praise you. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Paano mga kapatid? Paano nga ba tayong uh, makasasamba? How can we honor God through a, through a balanced lifestyle? Number one, we have to honor God in our body. What does the Bible has to say about our body? So 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 to 20, ang sabi, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. We are not our own. 
mga kapatid. For we were bought with a price. The life of Jesus. So we have to glorify God in our body. Hindi basta-basta ang ating mga katawan. Kahit pa yung iba, hindi halos mat- malubos na matanggap ang kanyang sarili dahil sa tingin niya ay marami siyang kakulangan para sa, pero para sa ating manilikha. Mga hiyas tayo sa kanyang paningin. Kaya't marapat lamang na pahalagahan natin ang ating mga katawan, balansihin ang ating mga buhay bilang pagsamba sa Diyos na may likha sa atin. Our bodies are of value to God. Kaya't wala tayong karapatan kahit sino sa atin na magpabaya sa ating mga sarili. Wala rin tayong karapatan para pahirapan ang ating mga katawan sa pamamaraan ng ating pamumuhay. Walang karapatan ang sino man sa atin ang maliiti natin ang ating sarili na pahirapan natin ang ating mga sarili. Yung bantipong hindi matulog ng sapat, Pahirapan ng emosyon at isip, lasunin ang katawan ng mga bisyo at ilugmok ito sa kung ano-anong pagpapagal sa tuwing may pinagdaraan ng bigat at sakit sa buhay. We should always remember that God cares not only about our souls but also about our bodies. When God created man, He made him a physical being. The fact that Jesus came to earth in a bodily form further demonstrates God's regard to our physical being. Paul tells believers frankly that their bodies are from God. Therefore, we should honor God with our bodies. We are called to steward our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. If we do not care for health or for our health, we are neglecting God's temple. We should take care of our health, lalo pa po ngayon, mga kapatid, through proper management of our physical body, which is the shell of our spirit. Huwag matigas ang ulo, labas pa rin ang labas, kahit alam na nga naglipa na ang mga ba- virus sa paligid. And let us not be an idler, ikilos ang katawan, nang naayon sa pangangailangan nito para humaba, ang buhay para maging healthy. However, mga kapatid, we should be reminded that in these pursuits, we must not lose sight of God. Marami kasi sa atin na itinuon na ang buong consciousness sa pagjijim. Wala namang masama. Pagpapaganda ng katawan. Pero ang masama dito, nalimutan yung panahon para sa Diyos. Let us remember the reason We care for our bodies is not just to look or feel good or feel fit or to be attractive to others, but because we value and desire to steward God's gifts to us. Paano nga naman tayo magiging pagpapala sa iba at magamit ng Diyos kung balot ng sakit ang katawan natin if we are unfit for the ministry? Ano pa po? Papaano natin ma-honor ang Diyos sa, sa ating balanced lifestyle? Honor God in what we eat. Sa Isaiah 55.2, ang sabi, Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fair. So, ano yung sinasabi dito? Make a healthy choice to eat a well-balanced diet. It is important to combine an active lifestyle with taking healthy diet. Eat only what your body needs in a day. Huwag nating i-advance mga kapatid ang breakfast bukas sa dinner natin ngayon. It's smart to control food portions. Huwag tipak-tipak na karne sa isang upuan at huwag rin namang kalde-kalderong kanin sa isang kainan. Dahil ito ay nakamamatay, nakapagpapaigsi ng buhay, o di kaya ay nagbibigay ng napakaraming komplikasyon sa katawan. Having proper nutrition adds to one's emotional well-being. It also empower one's mental strength to be sharp and functional. Pansinin ninyo, yung mga taong maganang kumain, mga kumakain ng hindi wasto ay kadalasan mga antukin. Hindi maganang mag-isip, hikab ng hikab. Lahat naman kasi tayo after eating, talagang aantukin. It is natural uh, natural response of the body to chemical, uh, you know, changes during digestion process. 
And it happens to everybody. Sa iyo, sa akin, maging sa inyo, sa ating lahat. However, frequency frequency of sleepiness after eating depends on the amount of our food intake and the type of food that we take. So, ito ay isang kapansanang nakaaapekto sa paraan ng ating pagkilos at pag-iisip ng tama. As Christians, we have to be reminded that we eat and drink for a greater purpose and that is to glorify God. Hindi po ba? Anong sabi sa 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31? Whether you eat or drink or whether you do or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So, we have to avoid eating impure things. Mga pagkain binabalot ng mga preservatives that can cause certain types of cancers. Alam naman natin yan at uh, proven na po yan. Mga sitsiryang punong-puno ng mga sangkap na nakalalaso ng ating mga brain cells ng mga, uh, at iba pang mga essential organs natin. We are what we eat, mga kapatid. Mayroon ba sa ating kakain halimbawa ng kumbuting kung alam naman natin ito ay nakalalason? Mayroon bang kakain sa atin ng double dead na karne kung alam namang ito ay nakamamatay? However, unfortunately, marami pa rin sa atin na alam na alam ng masamang kainin, kinakain pa. Alam na alam ng mataas ang blood sugar, hindi pa rin makaiwas sa pag-inom ng kung ano-anong sarsaparilya at kolas, or maghimagas ng bukayo, ng mga panutsa na hitik na hitik sa asukal, Namamahid na yung kalahati ng katawan pero hindi pa rin makapagtimpi sa pagkain ng lechong kawali, na isasabaw pa sa kanin yung mantika nito, mga taba ng baboy, mga, mga chicken skin, mga aligi ng talangka at mga pagkain hitik na hitik sa kolesterol. Namamagana yung mga kasukasuan, dala ng rayuma, hindi pa rin maiwasan kumain ng mga isdang ilang taon nang nakasilig sa mga botelya. Mga bakang dalawang taong nang nakatay at dinilata. Mga inuming kapag naparami ay nagpapalay sa tamang katinuan at pag-iisip. They actually aren't food, mga kapatid. Yun po ang katotohanan. Our Creator who designed our gastrointestinal tract and bio-assimilation system fully understood which food could be safely ingested as nutrients to be transformed to supply life-giving energy. Huwag tayong kumain na parang wala nang parating na mga bukas. Huwag ma-fall in love sa mga favorite na pagkain magbibingit lamang sa atin sa iba't ibang sakit at Mapapag, magpag, magpapaigsi ng ating mga buhay na sa huli, kapag nalagay naman tayo halimbawa sa isang uh, hindi magandang kalagayan komplikasyon, dala ng mga mali nating uh, pagkain eh, sisisihin pa ang Diyos tatanungin pa ang Diyos hindi ba't marami pong ganyan we must educate ourselves, mga kapatid, and strive to make wise decisions about the power or the proper way of eating that is honorable to God. Kaya't bago isubo ang kakainin o di kaya ay eh, lalagukin ang iinumin, itanong natin sa sarili, are these foods honorable to God? Ano pa po, mga kapatid, ang dapat nating maunawaan on how to honor God through our balanced lifestyle. <coughs> Excuse me po. Honor God through our hygiene. We are called to take care of our body, therefore hygiene is important to God. Even Jesus encouraged us that when we are fasting, we should not neglect the washing of our face or applying perfume on our head. Fasting or being tired is not an excuse, mga kapatid, for not taking a shower. If we are walking around with bad hygiene, mga kapatid, how are we be able to get close to someone and be a witness for Christ? Ang sabi sa Matthew 6, uh, verses 16 to 17, When you fast, do not look sober as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their rewards in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. Of course, ang binasa natin ay may ibang context, but still can be applied to our hygiene. Ibig lang sabihin, hindi lang tayo dapat mukhang maki- malinis. Dapat amoy malinis tayo at dapat totoo tayong malinis sa katawan. And cleanliness is defined as a quality or state of being clean. 
and also the habit of achieving and maintaining a clean state. Marami pa rin kasi sa ating mga kapatid na nasusumpungan lamang maglinis ang sarili kapag lalabas ng bahay. Pero paano kung hindi lalabas o hindi lumalabas, lalo pa ngayon at ang dami na namang na work from home. Mayroon din naman kapag bumabagsak ang mood dahil halimbawa sa pagkasawi sa pag-ibig, pagkawalan ng trabaho, o di kaya napagalitan ng magulang, o nawalan ng pag-asa, bumabagsak din ang naising maglinis ng katawan. Yung bang naising maligo at magsipilyo man lang. Cleanliness can be seen as a moral quality of being clean and free from dirt. On a moral, practical level, mga kapatid, cleanliness is attributed to a hygienic state of the prevention and the prevention of diseases. In the Bible, some of the laws of God to Moses and the Israelites had to do with the concept of, cl- of clean and unclean. There are different instructions given to them for as for washing and cleaning processes, especially for an unclean person before the person can be re- allowed to enter into the community or to be allowed uh, to uh, again uh, have connections with the community and the current pandemic mga kapatid has a very clear message to humanity and that is to be hygienic hindi po ba napansin natin yun? in Moses time Israelites have to keep the laws and instructions for being in a clean state before approaching God However, Jesus stated in the New Testament that we are not defined by what we eat or don't eat or how well and often we wash our hands but by the things in our heart. Jesus was not trying to discard the laws related to cleanliness but said this in reference to the state of man's morality, conscience, mind, and spiritual state. Therefore, we can say, that even though Israelites or even though cleanliness has nothing to do with godliness, especially based on what Jesus said, God is surely interested in our being clean. And for what purpose, mga kapatid? To keep us away from health disorders, from ill health. Di po ba? And most of the instructions in the book of Moses in the Old Testament can be compared to most of the hygienic standards and practices we have today. It only proves that God surely wants us to live in clean and hygienic conditions to live long in the ministry for His greater glory. So let us respect God through our hygiene. Ano pa po? Honor God with our appearance. So 1 Timothy 2 verse 9 ang sabi, Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire. We have to be mindful of the way we dress, mga kapatid. Children of God should walk with integrity, respect, love, honor, regard for God and for people. In essence, mga kapatid, their outward appearance reflects what's on the inside. The Bible gives us clear instructions about our apparel. We're told men and women should not dress with clothing of the opposite sex. Anong sabi sa Deuteronomy 22 verse 5? A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wears men, women's clothing, for the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. Our clothing should be modest appropriate to our gender and not causing any of our brothers or sisters to stumble. Huwag tayong maging daan upang tayo ay mapag-usapan o di kayo mapintasan. Huwag tayong maging daan upang mapuno ng kahalayan ng isip ng makakakita sa atin sa pamamaraan ng ating pananamit. Huwag nating pakabahin ang taong masasalubong natin dahil sa mga revelasyon ng ilang parte ng ating katawan na dapat ay itinatago. Let us be considerate of others by dressing up honorably. Let us be a blessing by choosing an appropriate hairstyle, proper accessories that we wear. Yung kagalang-galang ang ating appearance. Hindi bastusin, hindi tampulan ng katatawanan bagkos isang magandang ehemplo na, da- na magandang pamamarisan. 
And let us respect God by respecting our body through the way we fix ourselves. Having a reserved clothing and modest accessories that we put and apply to ourselves is not only honoring God, but demonstrating our high regard for ourselves and others. It is not a sin to desire for nice clothes or dress well. However, it is a sin when our craving for fashion is more important to us than our desire to be like Jesus. It is a sin when our consciousness is focused on self-gratification and extravagance than spiritual edification. You know the saying that you can tell the book by its cover? Wrong or right, mga kapatid, people judge others by what they see. Yan po ang kabalintunaan ng buhay at katotohanan ng buhay. And although we know that God looks at the heart, at some point we must choose not to become a stumbling block with our appearance. Dapat natin itong napag-iisipan para hindi tayo napupulaan. Pag-isipan natin ito. Na kapag naging maayos tayo sa ating appearance, mapababa rin natin ang level ng maling consciousness ng mga hypocritical Christians na naglipana sa napakaraming simbahan. Ano pa po? Honor God by being positive. Make a healthy choice to have a positive outlook. Lalo pa po ngayon at uh, uh, ma ma matindi pa rin po ang dagok na ibinibigay ng pandemic. Our bodies may be in fine shape, but our outlook in life may be dimmed and bleak, negatively affecting our health. At uh, sa aking pagbabasa, nakita ko po na napakataas po ng level ng mga uh, anong tawag dito? Level, mga cases po. Uh, level ng mga cases na may problema po, may, may issue po sa mental health because of the pandemic. So, negative thoughts and beliefs about life can lead to despair and anxiety. This emotion or emotional feelings can cause negative uh, physical problems, mga kapatid, that will impair a harmonious way of life. Disappointments and stressful situation may lead to rundown feelings, even leading to fatigue. Nakakapagod, hindi po ba? And these negative emotions will soon head to what? To depression that can kill. Fighting a negative outlook can be difficult, but there is a key to unlock the door of positivity. And that key is to trust God who is a positive God. The God who can turn the impossibilities to possibilities. He is a wonderful counselor. The mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Jesus! Anong sabi sa Isaiah 9.6? For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We can turn our worries over to him, to Jesus, for he knows us and cares for us. He is our mighty God that can turn our worries into peace, and he wants us to experience peace, experience his peace, to experience heaven on earth through his peace. King Solomon said in Proverbs 3 verse 7, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. It tells us not to rely on our own wisdom. Pero hindi naman ibig sabihin ito, wag lang tayong mag-iisip. The point is that our intellect, mga kapatid, is nothing compared to that of God who created us. We should always acknowledge the truth that we are coated with imperfections and with a lot of limitations. Hence, our wisdom falls far below God's wisdom that leads to false assumptions. And these false assumptions, mga kapatid, lead us to think and act negatively. It is infinitely better to venerate the Lord, to trust Him, than to follow our own inclinations that will lead us to desolations, to disappointments and hurts. And this principle applies to all 
faculties in making our choice, mga kapatid. Job did not understand why he was suffering so greatly, but he was convinced that the Lord knew what he was doing. He acknowledged that his responsibility was to respect the Lord and reject evil. Anong sabi sa John 28, 28? He quoted the Lord as saying, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. This only proves that Job did not let his miseries persuade him to react negatively and sin. Instead, he wisely appreciated and acknowledged God and and he acknowledged the fact that God knows what he is doing and eventually receive an abundant reward. Apostle Paul wrote that when we are anxious, let's take the situation to God. Ano pong sinasabi sa Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7? He said, Do not be anxious about anything but in everything with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It is wise, mga kabatid, to ask God for help and trust Him to bring His salvation to us. And as children of God, we should not give up and be constantly positive. When we sincerely request God of something, He will surely answer and reward us according to His perfect time and purpose. Sa Hebrews 11.6, ano pong sinasabi? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Ano pa po mga kapatid? How can we honor God through our balanced lifestyle? Honor God by nurturing our pakikipagkapwa-tao. Make a healthy choice mga kapatid to nurture our relationship with our fellow men. Let us cherish our relationship with our family with our friends, especially our old-time friends. Sariwain at buhayin yung mga magagandang relasyong nabuo natin sa ating mga dating mga kaklase, sa elementary, sa high school, sa university, yung mga kalaro natin nung tayo mga musmus pa. Balikan natin ito. An added dimension of healthy living involves good relationship with other people. Nurturing and treasuring relationships brings happiness. And that happiness can lead us to an experience of heaven. Kapag tayo masaya, yung experience na yun, yung feeling na yun, heaven yun. Para hindi tayo nakakaranas kadalasan ng mga uh, pakiramdam na para tayong nasa impyerno. Nurturing and treasuring relationship, tandaan po natin, brings happiness. So, hindi po tayo dapat gumagawa ng mga kaaway bagkos tayo po ay bumubuo ng mga relasyong pagkakaibigan at gumawa pa po ng marami pang mga kaibigan. And how to nurture a relationship with others and be like Jesus. Number one, by being humble, of course. Sino ba naman ang Gugusto yung maging kaibigan ng mga mayayabang. Anong sabi sa Matthew 23, verses 11 to 12? But the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself shall be humbled. And whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. An attitude of humility is the key to dealing with other people in a biblical way. Let us not, to be, let us not uh, be too selective nor too exclusive in relating with people. Yung mabuti lamang tayo sa ating mga kapanalig sa pananampalataya at malupit sa ibang may ibang pinaniniwalaan. Magiliw lamang tayo sa mga kapwa natin, kapareho natin ng paninindigan pagdating sa politika at kapag hindi kaaway na. Humility or humbleness, mga kapatid, is a quality of being courteously respectful of others regardless of who and what they are. Ito ay ang ating kakayanang abuti ng kamay ng ating kapwa, sino man sila, kapanalig man o hindi. Sa pagpapakumbaba ay nakakaya nating umunawa at magparaya kung kinakailangan. Nakakaya nating makinig at huwag munang magsalita. Nakakaya nating igaling, igalang ang ating kapwa kahit hindi sila kagalang-galang at kung kinakailangan tayo ay tumayo para sa isang paninindigan, nagagawa natin ito ng walang dahas, walang bangis, hindi malupit, bagkos may hinahon with kindness. 
Humility is the opposite of aggressiveness, arrogance, boastfulness, exaggerated pride. Ito isang katangi ang mag-abot ng tulong sa iba sa abot ng kanyang kakayanan. Why do qualities such as courtesy, patience, respect have such a prominent place in the Bible? You know why? It is because a character of humility is exactly what is needed to live in peace and harmony with all people. It is an important ingredient in the nurturing process of our relationship with others. Acting with humility does not in any way, mga kapatid, deny our own self-worth. Kasi yung iba, tatatakot, eh, mapapakumbaba ako, tapos masyado namang inaaba ko ang sarili. No, it's not. Rather, it affirms the inherent worth of all persons. Kasama na tayo doon na nagpapakumbaba. Ano pa po? How to nurture? Pakikipagkapwa by being forgiving. Sa Matthew 6 verses 14 to 15, ang sabi, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. So we should always be willing to forgive. Hindi lang po yung mga taong gusto natin patawaran, lahat. Forgive others and not hold any ill will against them. Pati na po dun sa mga ang hirap na patawaran, hindi na sobrang laki na nagawang sala sa atin. Ang, ang sabi sa atin, magpatawad at patawarin. Kahit hindi pa hinihingi ang patawad natin, unahan na natin silang patawarin. Bakit? Dahil dito tayo ay panalo. Dahil dito tayo ay lalaya, gagaan ang ating kalooban at mapapayapa ang ating isip. Holding a grudge and seeking revenge have no place in the lives of those who truly love their neighbors, who truly accepted Jesus in their hearts. Oh, sasabi natin Christian tayo pero ang daming nating hindi mapatawad. Ba, eh, we have to assess our, ourselves. Tapat, tingnan natin ano ba yung laman ng puso natin. Si Jesus pa ba talaga? Jesus calls us to remember that we are all God's children. Jesus, just as He loves His all His people, mga kapatid, and is willing to forgive their sins, we should be willing to forgive also. Let's be like Jesus. Jesus' character should be manifested in our dealings with our fellow men. If He is truly the Lord of our life. Kaya mahirap yung sinasabi nating I will follow you, I love you, Jesus, I worship you, O God, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Tapos ang dami nating kagalit. Hindi tayo marunong magpatawad. Ano pa po, mga kapatid? How to nurture relationship with other people by taming our tongue. Sa Matthew 12 verses 35 to 37, ang sabi, A good person produces good words from a good heart, and an evil person produces evil words from an evil heart. And I tell you this, that you must give an account on judgment day of every idle word you speak. The words you say now reflect your faith then, either you will be justified by them or you will be condemned. The words we say or write, mga kapatid, have tremendous power for good or evil. Sinabi man natin ito, pinost man natin ito sa social media, mayroon itong epekto. Words can promote love and understanding or inflame prejudice and hatred. It is words that make or break marriages and other relationships. Pwedeng sumiklab ang isang digmaan dahil sa salita. At sa salita rin maaaring humupang isang hidwaan. Our word should always show a spirit of Christian love. Isang katalinuhan ang magsalita ng may pag-ibig, ng may pagmamalasakit, na may pagtutuwid pero balot ng kabaitan. At hindi marapat sa isang tunay na anak ng Diyos ang magpakawala ng salitang wawasak ng puso. Ng kapwa. Sisira ng kanyang pagkatao, yuyurak ng kanyang dangal. Broken bones can heal with time, but a broken spirit caused by words of death isn't easily repaired. How many people have we injured or killed with our words? Pag-isipan nga po natin ito. Hindi ko mo tinutulungan natin isang tao ay mayroon na tayong karapatan upang siya isumbatan at paratangan ng masasakit na salita. 
Hindi komot nakikiutang na loob ang isang tao sa atin ay mayroon na tayong kapangyarihan paikutin sila sa ating mga palat at gawing mga ili- alipin sa pamamaraan ng ating pananalita. Is your tongue too quick to criticize? Is your tongue too deadly to humiliate and kill? Do your words build up or they do or they do tear down? Dapat nagtatanong, pinag-iisipan. Isang katalinuhan, mga kapatid, ang paamuin ng ating mga dila. At isang kabanalang gamitin nito para magpala, magpagaling sa mga may sugat, bumuhay ng mga naghihingalong pag-asa at magpuri sa Diyos na may likha. What is coming out of our mouth today, mga kapatid? Death or life? Swords, trusts, or healing? Sa Proverbs 12:18 ang sabi, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So let us speak life. Let us share healing. And let us honor and revere God through our tongue. So in conclusion, mga kapatid, be reminded that Jesus himself lived a balanced lifestyle. A life of joy, persistence, hard work, discipline, a time with the Father, compassion, purpose, and everything in balance, in a balanced relationship with his mental faculties through reading. Di po ba makita natin, parati siya nagkukot, mga sinasabi niya, nabasa niya po doon sa mga, mga nakatalang uh, mga salita nung araw. Binabasa niya po ito, Law of Moses at kung ano-ano pa. Ang kanyang pangangatawan ay pwede rin nating sabihin napakalakas, malakas at batak dahil uh, sa tamang pagkilo, sa tamang pagkain. Considering na sa kabila ng magdamag niyang hindi pagtulog nung siya ay uh, huhulihin na at na-torture pa nga, he was tortured in the hands of the Roman army, ay determinado pa rin niyang nabuhat ang napakabigat na Roman cross. At hindi lang po yun. He has a healthy social connection that is evident in his teachings. He was well loved by men that even in his death, he receives favors from men like Joseph of Arimathea who gave his own grave site to him or for him. And for us who are no longer servants of sin, of this secular world, but are Jesus' friends, mga kapatid, should maintain, must maintain a balanced lifeta- lifestyle like Him as well. Let us remember, mga kapatid, that the life of Jesus is now in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it is pe- feasible. It is, uh, it, is, uh, it can happen. It is possible, mga kapatid, to embrace and live a well-balanced lifestyle. And, can, and it can be done if our life's equation is consistently linked to our constant dependence to the God Almighty. Let us reassess the balance sheet of our life to see if our lifestyle is earning a favorable income, having a productive and harmonious living. At pakatandaan natin mga kapatid, ang katawang mayroon tayo ay hindi sa atin ha? Pahiram lamang ito sa atin ng dakilang Diyos. Kaya't marapat lamang na sa panahong kailangan na natin itong ibalik, sa Panginoon ay maisa uli ito ng buo. Hindi yung sira-sira na. Hindi yung butas-butas, tagpi-tagpi. Dapat buo pa rin dahil naalagaan natin ng tama kahit pasabihin na luma, tumanda at kumulubot. Let us continue to grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for to Him alone belongs all the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Pagpalain po tayong lahat ng Panginoon. Marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat.